she was like, oh, I've been working at the hospital, so I don't want to get close to you. And I was like, okay, uh, I'll, I'll you know, give in to that. So we both sat in separate cars and we both ate a burrito together in separate cars with our windows down. <laughs> and I thought I was like, now thinking back, it's at very that time, ridiculous. No in the stock, no more supply, no anything. Very, you know, it's very, a lot of people scary, but I'm not scared. Sad story. Uh, one of my friend, uh, mom, who is elderly, um, she passed away. Um, I got notice from my friend say that her mom, uh, his mom passed away due to COVID-19. I'm like, oh, this is real. This is not joking matters. But I, I, I got that she came and hurt me. She don't, she don't scare anything. So that changed my mind a lot. Uh, desperate to express, we become writers. All of a sudden, I have to write all these feelings onto paper. Never write before. So up until May, I, we went and do a bunch of stuff in the house. I became a gardener. I became a poet. I became a cuisineer. I became a yogi. So I came up with this poem. <laughs> Let me read it to you. Desperate for food diversity, we become cuisineers. Desperate for mental clarity, we become organizers. So Endow and I, we call each other on the phone and we order from Amazon to death all the bins that we can organize our kitchen, we redo all the drawers. So we just keep ourselves busy, keep our mind sane. And I said, to find our old selves, we become hairdressers. We have to become our own hairdressers. All the hairdressers are closed, all the salons are closed. Right? This is a phenomenon, never been like this before, right? And then I go, desperate to recognize our loved ones, we become barbers. I can't recognize my kids anymore, they're all long hair. And it's so ironic to the point, I used to have to bribe them so I can cut their hair. Now they have to bake me to cut their hair. And I'm like laughing inside, hey, you know? They keep saying, mom, you took so long, mom, you took so long. And now mommy's not gonna cut your hair. And they have to bake me. So that's a very deep satisfaction where your kids have to bake you to cut their hair. And then I go, okay, let me recognize you. You know, so it takes months, right? You're stuck in the house. They can't go outside to cut their hair. So mommy kind of wins that. And then I said, desperate to unwind, we become yogis. So a bunch of friends form together and we become familiar with Zoom. We do yoga every day. And then I did the blank challenge with Pacific Y. That was a good idea, right? Um, desperate to de-stress, we become bicyclists. My husband and I started to bicycle. You know, we go bicycling. Um, he put batteries into the bicycle and that was his hobby. He started to invent stuff. Uh, desperate to express, we become writers. All of a sudden, I have to write all these feelings onto paper. Never write before. And then desperate to entertain, we become singers. I got bored. I have to sing my karaoke day after day. Desperate to communicate, we become Zoom proficients. All of a sudden, everybody's using Zoom meetings, right? Pacific Y started to open in May. And before that, we would do parties. Uh, over the Zoom. Remember um, Leon and, and MC did the Friday night movie night and all that stuff and that was a good idea. They try to keep us together. Desperate to educate, we become educators. I have to teach my kids. They're at home. They're not in school anymore. So you gotta educate them, right? Desperate to feed the hungry, we, we become donors. You see on the news, everybody didn't have money, couldn't work. And then you find sites where you can donate and that makes us feel good. Gotta do something to feel good. 
desperate to improve matters, we become inventors. So my husband, he invented for ourselves a steam room. I saw on the internet, uh, um, my brother-in-law texted us how steaming can help ward off the COVID. So my husband took the PVC pipes and he built a box like, and he bought um, moving blankets and he put it over and then we used an electric uh, kettle and then we put in eucalyptus oil and we just steam every night. Just in case, you don't know, right? Um, desperate to protect the feeble, we become deliverers. A lot of people deliver food for old people because they can't go out. And then, desperate to protect the frontliners, we become seamstress. I started making 50 masks to help this one friend of mine. Well, she wasn't a friend, now we're good friends. So in, in, in volunteering, you kind of uh, get new friends. She and I now are good friends. But back then, she's the one who put together thousands, her name is Ngao, thousands of masks and ship out to New York. You start seeing people doing all these great things to, to make themselves, you know, everybody's anxious. Everybody's like, don't know what's gonna happen. You gotta do something. So you convert all that feeling into doing something good. So I sat there and I make 50 masks <laughs> for her with stress because my machine wouldn't work. Then I got my husband and my son come in and help. It's a project, a, a short project, right? Everybody come in. And then I said, in order, uh, I said, desperate to save lives, we become heroes. There's a lot of heroes. People, frontliners, um, all the health workers, right? And then as I said, and desperate to survive, we come together. And we did, everybody came together all under the same sky, same roof, one human race. You imagine this is global. This is not just US feeling this, this is global. And we discover we can be many things when need be to become each other's protectors, helpers, caregivers. All the while not to forget as we lie down to rest each night, not knowing what tomorrow will bring desperate to hold on to that special someone we cherish, embrace, tight. So every night I lie down next to my husband and I'm thinking everybody, a lot of people lose their loved ones. You don't know when, what will be. So you just hold on tight to what you have. And then I said, to sip is not to rip. We survive. We hang on, we survive. So I said, P.S., desperate to hold on tight to my money, I become frugal. Everybody's holding on tight to their money, right? You don't want to spend, right? Except for Amazon. And then I became a poet. One poem. I became a poet. <laughs>